Good morning. Uh, this is the Board of Commissioners Idolized Village uh, meeting of Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. First item is approval of the agenda. I'd like to modify the agenda and add a non-public session to discuss water operator RFP. Okay. At the end of the meeting. Yes. Thank you. Second on that? Second. Yes. Yes. Okay. Approval of the minutes of... Um, and then the agenda. I vote to approve the Pardon amended me? agenda. I make a motion to approve the amended agenda. Okay. Second, yes. 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 Okay, approval of the minutes of uh, April 11th. Any comments? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. second and yes. Yes. Uh, the non public under 91A3L. Make a motion to approve that. Second. Yes. Yes. I don't think it was part of that. There you were. Is it last week? Yeah. yeah. Last week we're in. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Approval of the manifest. Nine checks. Totaling 8,990. Motion approved. Yes. 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 I just had a question. I looked at the spreadsheets for the time cards and I'm learning that I should keep looking down to see where the actual time cards were, but they weren't in that file. Were they somewhere else? No, they were all in the file. Yeah, it's all in there. I look. It, it gets copied as one. If you get the front page, you get the whole uh, thing. Again, I looked twice at it, and I was looking for them. No. Nope. And the only other question I had is, uh, my understanding is that when Tony is working on the 7400, the big international truck, which I don't know whether he's working on or not, I'm going to ask him about that today, that that's going to be taken out of the warrant office. Correct. So we'll see that we'll, we'll see that in the time card. So yes. Mm -hmm. When that will be charged here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, it's in the shop, so he's not working on it. Right. It's, yeah. Yeah. No. No time yet. No. Against no. the warrant document. No. Thank no. you. No. Okay. Then there is an operating account manifest ten checks, totaling seven thousand four fifty two fifty one. Make a motion to approve those. Second. Yes. 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 There's no checks. Okay. It's just the payroll. DPW. Do you know um, what's going on with uh, Kelly? Um, he's not here today. Or well, not at the meeting. He will be able to attend. Personal matter. Do we know anything about the 7400? It wasn't discussed last week, I don't think. I don't have an update, no. It's still in the shop. Do we know about grading? Road grading? Um, no, I know they were blowing um, the sand. They were doing that last week. That's all I know. Thanks. Okay. And the go. road band will be lifted today. Good to know. Okay. Uh, administration, uh, uranium. Uh, yeah, so I did speak with um, the state DES. Um, I'm not sure if you if you read the emails, but there was correspondence, and they gave us, you know, some options on what we could do. Mm -hmm. Um one option was to sample the two wells independently of each other. Um, so I could reach out to Granite State and have them do that if you wanted. Obviously there would be an additional fee. I don't know what the fee would be. Um, to, option two um, would be to turn the wells off and keep them as a backup and run them you know, prior to testing. And then option three would be to keep running the wells. Um, Per my conversation with him, we believe that the issue occurred because, and it's, he states it in his email, because of the wilds being stagnant during that extended period of time in December. Um, since running them, the levels have dropped to almost in compliance. Um, 
I personally recommend continuing to run them. I don't think if you turn, I think if you turn them off, they're just the problems going to arise. Okay. Again. Yes, sir. There was a history Excel spreadsheet of the radiation, radiological. Yes. That, I'm assuming that came from the testing company. Um, that came from the state. That testing company sends everything to the state, and the state put that together. That was very useful. It showed two tests. I think there's one that was in January and another one in April. Yes. Recently. And the uranium levels look the same in that table. Three zero? No, that is the, um, the 30 is the limit. So for um, January it was 42.1. So obviously it's way over the limit. And then for April it was 33.6. So it's 3.6 away from being in compliance. Um, so you can see it's significantly dropped while running the pump in the wells. Um, <coughs> so I assume come June or July at the next quarter testing, the levels will be in compliance. I looked at the uh, water usage for March. Yes. And what was interesting is a couple of things. This is your report. I don't know if I should talk about this now. Are you done? Um, Muddy Beach 1 was delivering more water on average <coughs> per day than DPW one, DPW well. Mm -hmm. There were 18 days that Muddy Beach one delivered more water to the system than DPW one did. So th that pump has really been used. Yeah, which, I, don't, I don't know why, but... It, yeah. yeah, that's the next question is, how, okay. how is this working? You'd have to ask the water operator. I don't the skater know. system might play a part in it, but yes, yes. Well, I'd, I'd like to know. It doesn't have to be immediate, but there seems to be a benefit if we just looked at the uranium numbers. They didn't, didn't question why this was happening. That the uranium numbers are going down, which because Muddy Beach is really being used, I would say pretty hard. Yeah, it's been like that for a while. Yeah. I, also, I guess not. March was different than February. February, it was, it, Muddy Beach was used more than DPW, like eight times. In March, it was 18 times. Um, and the other thing to note is that it looks like Muddy Beach delivers, during March, Muddy Beach would deliver a maximum of about 50,000, 55,000 gallons. Never more than that and then drop off for a few days, some number of days. There's a, there's a kind of a pattern to this, but figuring out the pattern to it without knowing what the SCADA system is doing. That's the numbers come from the SCADA system. No, the SCADA system is a controlling when oh. Muddy Beach is called versus when DPW is called. You'd have to ask the water operator right. or so um, the sometime SCADA I'd like to engineer. Okay, well, we should make an inquiry to uh, Ian. Why don't you... Uh, asking him for what is going on with the SCADA system with respect to disposition the of the... There's a flow chart about how the control system is working. When does it decide that it's going to ask DPW1 to deliver the water to the system, and when does it decide Muddy Beach is the one that's going to do it? Okay. How is that all set up? All right, well, with respect if to... If that could be written down, too, as opposed to Yeah, I'm just send an email. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Well, the other issue is a uh, decision as to whether or not we shut down uh, Muddy Beach or continue to run it. I'll make a motion that we continue to run. Second. Muddy Beach. Any comments, Mike? Yes. Yes. Okay. While we're talking about Muddy Beach, I'd like to stay on that. Um, in Ian's email, he says well number two has um, a road trip and things. So that's either the heater or the starter probably on that. So I would suggest that we contact Ian to get his electrician in there to rectify that problem. Um, I don't believe it's a major problem. But um, the pump will trip out is according to him. So that's normally what trips out a pump. And that's why um, Muddy Beach Pump 2 isn't running. 
You're making a motion, right? I'm making a motion to get in, to get the electrician in here to rectify the problem. Get us a, get us a number to rectify the problem, find okay. out what it is. I'll it's got to be the heater of it. It's got to so, be the heater so of it. So to be clear, you're asking for an estimate from an electrician to fix the problem, diagnose and fix the problem, and then an estimate? It's probably going to cost us more to have them come in twice if it's a heater. So you know, you're saying just fix it? Yeah, I mean... I mean, it's got to be fixed one way or another at some point. So what do you have from motion, Alexis? I make a motion to get the electrician and get an electrician to fix the, the electrical problem at Muddy, uh, on pump number two at Muddy Beach. Second. Um, <clears throat> any idea how much would... I have no idea. I, I mean, I'm assuming it's now this is an assumption from the distance. It's either the heat or the starter. Can't be the pump. The pump runs. Right. So that's just to have Muddy Beach operational in case there's a problem with Muddy Beach One's pumping system. We don't we don't really need it, but we want. It. The capability of using Muddy Beach too, if we have to. That's correct. So I'll vote yes on that. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, the May schedule. I'd like to move the 23rd to the 24th. That'd be a Wednesday. The what? I'd like to move the 23rd to the 24th. I'm out of town. In May. In May. <coughs> no, no problem. I'll second that. <coughs> yes. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be here from May second to the sixteenth. Okay. So you're out of town. Yes. Okay. Okay. The cash flow analysis. Very interesting schedule. You want to walk us through it? We just basically took what Dinah gave us and we plugged in the numbers um, that we've had. Okay, and the conclusion is, do we have adequate funds in the TAN note to bridge the time period until we get the second payment? Gonna be close if we do, because um, well, we, we should be able to use this table to make a decision to make a determination as to um, do we appeal to the bank to expand the TAN note. Well, in um, August we'll be getting what 156. Um, yeah, July, August, whenever that check comes, it'll be 150. Okay, so the, the negatives, though, we have um, we have 250 to start, and we had two drawdowns, correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that gives us a balance of one was 50, I think, and the other was 25. 25. Yeah, so 75. 75. And I, so that gets us to 75. Yes. You know, on the second line, there's tower, and then the second line is taxes. Can mm -hmm. you show that January 18,000 came in, which we know? Yeah, but we had to put it in January. It was for last year's taxes. So we're not forecasting tax payments in July and. No, there's a star. There's a star there because we don't know the amount. It's roughly. But we can't, you know, I don't know what definitely we're getting. Well, we, well, so we, we should have, have an estimate there. This is cash flow analysis. Right. Flow is what you would expect as best you can. It seems on average about $50,000 is spent on monthly bills. So... Why don't I work with you? We'll, we, we'll revisit this next week. Can I just have a couple of comments? Sure. 
Um, let me check with Donna, but I think in July we have our huge liability interest payment. I mean, not interest payment, but yep. insurance payment. That's all yep, there. it's on there. If and you're uh, looking, so the first section is income. Those are the ah, income we receive. The second section is expenses. All right. Yeah. Well, what, what we need to do is estimate. So the uh, estimated expenses is $50,000. The tax check, um, Mark was right, it's the two checks combined, divided in half, so the tax check estimated is $157,000. And another so thing. So wouldn't we want to plug that in? Sure, I can plug that in. Thanks. Okay. That's all. That makes sense. You don't have to do anything then. Correct. And, and the second payment would be, wouldn't be cut in half. It would be... The remainder. Right. So my estimation is about five hundred thousand dollars. Total. For the second check. That's like very vague math, so don't <laughs> hold me to that. I didn't you have to take out you have to take the total budget minus the water, minus the first check, and then take out any income. It's so heavily I don't know weighted what, because the calculation for July is reduced by the eighteen thousand from the previous year, so yes. the bulk of it is shifted to the second payment. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Probably I, think I had a number last week. I don't remember what I told you. Oh. The number you had for the July check was right. That was what we had determined. So I don't know. I what don't think the number I had for this December payment or January payment was five hundred thousand. I don't. I don't. I didn't write that down. Just another minor detail. Um, the 2019 truck loan is paid off, so we don't need an August payment. The truck isn't paid off. Is that the truck paid off too? No. I thought just the two truck two paid off. The three got paid off this year. The greater did. And Oak Ridge did. Okay, so the truck, but it looks like the truck. I don't think, the truck the truck I don't think that. Let me check myself. That's okay. Another, yeah. Just another item to check. Thank you. Okay. Done. Yeah. Okay. No, 25. 25. Okay. So. Good. A big Rhinoc tank payment in July, August. That's going to hit that small amount we're getting in. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is how. Mm -hmm. This is good to have a dashboard on cash flow. Right. To see that. So if it's tight because of the July payment, the big whack happens 30 days later on that. That sends the August with a, if it's a normal average cash flow, average expenditures of, you're saying 55? You said 50. What number are you using? Around 50. So if you look under monthly bills, it was 53, 63, 52, so yeah, you could say 55. Monthly bills. Um, monthly bills. But you also, you can, you, you can deduct the income from the top, so it says total expenses. You can so see you don't want to, <coughs> do you want to forecast out things like the monthly bills or the average, and then they change if there's a way of, Showing like so, we know January, February, March, and we have 53 for January, 63 for February, and 52 for March. Mm -hmm. So, the average of that, those three, would be a little above 53. Mm -hmm. So, if I just said 56. We would say it's going to be 56 going out and see what really happens as far as okay. the continuing monthly bills. And then we add the exceptional expenses on top of it, such as the RINAC payment, so that we know how long will it take us to actually figure out that we're in trouble without changing anything. Could we do that today? That's why I'm saying if we had these things filled in. That's why I'm suggesting I'll work with them and we'll cycle back next week. Great. Okay. So I appreciate that this, this happened is today. This great, great effort. I appreciate it very much. Nicely done. Thank you.
You don't mind if we tweak it as we go? Mm -hmm. No, that's no, the point yeah. of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a very good uh, point to deal with it. Um, AMS 232. That's just the uh, DRA, so they just finalized the budget. So, yeah, as you can see here, total voted appropriations is one million thirty. Five three ninety six. So you can see that's what we have to fund. Obviously, take out the water bill or the water um, budget, and then if any bills are all, yeah, I don't know. All right. Tight tank issue. We have correspondence from... Yeah, that can't just be pumped into the water. It needs to be um, taken care of, so I don't know if you want to just approve the quote. Um, you do need to figure out where you're going to get the rest of the money, though. Okay, there's 5000 of the 6000 cover. Yeah, so DES said that you it needs to be properly disposed of off-site. Um, and the EPA didn't, they sent them some information, but the EPA it was kind of um, said that you could dispose of it in a sewer system that was treated. Right, but we don't have a sewer system. So yet. we don't have a sewer system that treats the pollution with the materials. Out of all those paragraphs in the EPA, that was the only thing that stuck out that uh, was. So now we have the issue of uh, clean harbors, the estimate. And it was 6,000, 184 dollars and 13 cents. So we have 1,184.13 that we need to determine where it comes from. As far as I can determine, Chairman, we got a quote from Clean Harbors. How was that decided? We. I'm looking at this fi fixed cost of this thing, and it's staggering the way this whole project came about. And this is a fixed cost every year that's going to go up from six thousand. It's not every year. This is and what two or three years since it's been pumped. Right. I mean, it's never it's been installed. pumped since it's been installed. Oh, so it's two or three years. So it's kind of weather dependent, I guess, what the mm -hmm. trucks bring in. Um, you comment about sewer. Clean Harbors is a hazardous waste waste company. Right. Uh, there are companies that pump sewage in this area. Okay. I'm asking why was it determined that Clean Harbors is the one we went to? I don't. How was that decided? Who decided that? I don't. It was uh, Kelly doing an exploration. Now I, he's not here, so he can't deter, tell us whether or not there was interest from other parties. I guess by the reaction of the employees and a commissioner, I shouldn't suggest looking into other ways of handling this. Oh, if you'd like, I, I'll second. I'll make a motion to. Uh, authorize your investigation if you're saying that this can be pumped into a sewerage system all the pumping companies here pump the septic tanks and bring it to a sewage processing mm -hmm. well that's what the EPI said the EPA is EPA. saying that. that that it could be disposed of in a sewer system that is treated Should we look? Want to look at that? All right. I mean, I'm asking you. Should we look at that? I'll, I'll do yeah, the work. I'm fine I'll, with that. I'll, yes. 
So, yeah, DES says that they require the tank is pumped out and sent to an approved facility. North Conway WWTF may accept such wastewater. So, it does need to be So instead of clean targets, if a local company gets it to North Conway, All right. we, should, we should know whether that price is significantly different. All right, let's... Um, I'll make a motion. Do you guys agree with that? Any objections to that? No, okay. no objections. Sure. So I'll make a motion that I ask local companies to pump three, if they'll pump 35. three thousand gallons, thirty-five, thirty-five hundred gallons, um, and to the North Conway treatment, Tre treatment plant. facility. I think you better find out, make sure that North Conway will accept it. Sounds like they will. It's just, a company that brings it there. I'll be. It'll be a company. I'll ask the companies if that's where they bring it anyway. Okay. All right. I'll second it. And yes. Yes. Okay. Signature items. Any signature items? No. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner's reports. Mark. Uh, Yes, I'd like to make a motion as, I'll give you time to capture this, I even wanted if I should, should have written it out in advance, but this is going to be about selling the Volvo backhoe. So as step one, I'd like to have the Volvo backhoe put in front of the, um, VD, the office in, at the corner of the driveway where we put um, the trucks that have been sold, and you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And I'd like to be specific and say it's angled at the oncoming traffic that's coming downhill, the windshield, and that a for sale sign go on the windshield. So anybody driving downhill, heading north, sees that this is for sale, like we did with Old Yellow. And on the, on the driver's window where somebody would pull in if they were interested in knowing more about it, I'd like handwritten signs or printed signs from the office that say a price of 38500 and the telephone number of the office if they have any interest to identify themselves. Okay. How did we come up with the number? A little research online. If you have a better number, let's hear it. I don't. I'm asking how we got the number. I just said. You got back up for that? I mean, we went from 25,000 to 38,500. I don't want to chase people away if that number's too high. There's my motion. Um, <clears throat> why don't we um, ask uh, Kelly about what he believes the market will bear until we get another opinion? But I'm inclined to agree with. The, your principles, but I would like to get a, another benchmark. Okay, so we can deal with that. Make a request to Kelly with respect to his estimate as to what the full value. I don't value. think he has an estimate. I think, I think that's why he was passing that that's it along. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted nothing to do with it. He yeah. yeah. will not want something. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll vote yes. So we'll see what see what comes of it. The issue will be then we'll have to go into the... Now remember, this is step one, right? Right. There's other steps to follow. The first thing is to get it on the market and get it out where the locals can see this. Then we expand how we market it beyond our local area of having people see it on. This is what we did with Old Yellow. Mm -hmm. And this is what we did with the white pickup truck where the dealer only wanted to give us $6,000 in trade in for it with the plastic sander on the back of it, if you remember that, mm -hmm. we ended up selling it for $14,000. But it's a multi-step process. All right. Okay. So you seconded? Yes. And I'm voting yes. The motion and you're voting yes? Yes. So that uh, we'd like to get that. I think we should get that out immediately. We should stop using that backhoe. Today. I don't think they're using it. They were using it yeah, last week. Yeah, they for the blowing. Which apparently which, the attachment. That's, that's not good. All right. So we'll we'll start the marketing process. 
Anything else? Um, I have a motion I'd like to make um, regarding, I guess, finance, which I don't know if we're going to discuss it later, but let me make a motion is I'd like to have the accounting system change where my motion is that when a water hookup $10,000 fee comes in as a payment, that it stays in the um, assessment water assessment fund and it is accounted for by the road location of where that water hookup is going to happen. So let's pick and say two Gretchen that it's accounted for so we can see that $10,000. And then when the, all of the expenses for the hookup are taken from the 10000 then our policy is we move it into the capital reserve. Right. I don't believe we can do that. That's why that the um, CRF, we were told to put it in to the CRF when we got the money. I believe it was the DRA um, told us we had to do that because we couldn't that money was can't be used for any assessment fund money until we have the project done. That just counteracts what you were saying to me from the first one. Um, I'd like to see that in writing. I'd like to talk to DRA directly about that. I never. All right, why don't we... I, I know it was set up because we couldn't hold the money because okay. it was not to be used um, Are you as saying that cash a check? I'm saying cast a check, account for it, hold it in the assessment fund, take the expenses out of it when the job is completed, then that the remainder is the capital reserve. It doesn't make sense to me that DRA is saying that there's move something into a capital reserve and then use it as an expense account to pay off bills against it that we know have to be paid. Going back to the trustees to make a withdrawal on a fund for expenses, not for capital expenditure. Okay. I'd like to talk to them directly. I believe the way you ask any state agency, the way you ask the question is the kind of answer you get. Okay, you want to make a motion on that? Did I call them? Yeah. What yes. about the first motion? Nobody right. seconded it. I, I think. What, why don't you make the call with Donna mm -hmm. so yeah. she understands uh, the conversation? Yeah, I think your office needs to handle this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'll make an appointment to make the call with them at the office. The only problem is is trying to get a hold of the state. So or you can get us get a, a, a time. time. And how about I do it in writing so that that we that's fine. I'll, that's I'll fine. send an email yeah. copy of the office and right. you see what mm -hmm. I asked and then we get the answer. If we okay. get the answer it's in writing. Okay. Right. That's great. That's, that's fine. the motion. Okay. okay. So we'll hold off on the motion to actually change the accounting system until we get the answer on this question, right. which is yes. by contact by email, DRA. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's contacting DRA, the offices? I am copying them by email. That isn't what we were talking about a minute ago. This thing just got twisted. The no, he was going to call. But, but then it, he got no second on it. He made a motion, got no second on it. And Ralph went towards the office making a thing. Now he wants to get involved. What do you have for a motion, Alexis? I'm still writing it. For you to contact the DRA by email and CC the office in regards to the accounting, accounting of, of water hookup money account. through the assessment fund. This could, the, the office should be making this. The other ones in need charge. a second for discussion. Second. Why don't you send your communication to the office and they'll deal with the DRA. Same thing. Gets you to the same same place. That way the office I know not for anything when the issue with the lodge came about, you made a motion that anything to go into the DRA goes through the office. Um, and Michelle Clark was um, going to only go through the office. Um, 
so that if you want to send the email, we can send it into the DRA and we'll copy you when we send it out. Everything should go through the office. This one commission reacting on solo is wrong. And that's what's going on. That's I'm here I'll making a motion. I'll I don't cut. like this stuff. I don't like this either. I don't oh, like well, this hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's just... Mark, I don't think that it's a significant issue. We should be able to have the office deal with the DRA. Mm -hmm. And we've had multiple situations where there's been communications that we aren't not, haven't been aware of and all of that. So if they respond to... Well, your, we can just CC all of you when we send right. the email. Yeah. So, so you're going to compose the email? No, you compose the email, send it to the office, and then I'll just so re-send it. Instead out. of coming from me, copying them, I'm going to give it to them, they're sending it, copying me. Right. Yep. Yeah. Way to run an airline. All right. Well, there's no way to run an airline you have to solo either. This isn't solo. Oh, by you sending me this, so you did it right out of the box first. All right. Let's. No, I didn't. I copied the office on it. Okay. We didn't let's... even meet yet. You could have waited. All right. Let's. let's... So, what's the vote? All right. So, the motion, as I understand it, is that Mark will compose. Um, a email for the DRA, which will come from the office. Be sent I'll by second. the office. I'll second that. Sent by the office. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Anything else, Mark? No. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I kept saying a couple things. Um, Last week at the end of the meeting, the water committee came out and said that they want to do paperwork. I, I'm frustrated with the water committee. I'm, I have no problems telling people that all of last year I expected something from them, a plan, nothing came out. And then they came out with one thing at the end with no engineer stamp on it. So I would suggest that we tell the water committee that uh, we expect out of them short-term planning, intermediate planning, and long-term planning, and a breakdown of it. And if we don't have something by September, then we need to dissolve that committee, form a new committee, so that we have something to go to the annual meeting. They've had enough time, they've had over, year, over 15 months to get their act together, and I don't see it happening. We, we sat here one time and said that, plan on a couple hundred thousand to 225,000 per year to come in, they came with nothing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with them doing nothing and we're sitting here letting them go down the street and we're not correcting an issue that's going on. I know it's a volunteer committee, but I mean, if we don't get something out of it, we're just as guilty as they are for not doing anything. Mark, I'm not throwing you under the bus on this because I know you're new on the committee. But the committee has been in existence. They've met without posting meetings and met without having minutes. And they came last year with basically nothing. It's time for them to get their act together or dissolve the committee and form a committee that's going to do something. So I'm making that as a motion to, to have them give us by September 1st or September whatever date you want to give us some short term planning, long term planning, and intermediate planning so that the village district can move forward with the water system and have the blessing of the commissioners. Okay, I'll second it so we have a discussion. Uh, I'll, I'll invite uh, Jay to, are you the chair? Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, oh, uh, I'll invite Doug. Doug to make a comment. Well, that's pretty much what we're working on uh, this year. <clears throat> data gathering so that we have the material that we need to speak up will you please time. speak up so I can hear you <clears throat> sorry I have a throat problem our goal we've had one meeting and our goal uh, this year is to uh, focus on uh, 
improving the quality of data that we have on the system. That's why we want to visit the office and see what records are available there as an educational step. And based on that, then we'll have the information we need to uh, improve the plan that we already developed. We, we gave you a, a plan that was a seven-year seven -year plan. We want to refine that. Uh, nothing's ever fixed in concrete. It's constantly uh, changing with new information that we find and so forth, and that's our goal this year. So we're already doing, we're already focusing on what you're suggesting. I have not heard that you had a seven-year plan. That's the first that's come out at this meeting here. We presented it at, to the commissioners last year. I never heard of that, Doc, to tell you the it's, truth. It's a document that you held, you held, oh, okay. Jay held. It's a spreadsheet that we gave you. Yeah, it was a spreadsheet. You remember? So the, it was September time firm yeah. last, last year. And that was at the request of the Board of Commissioners at that time. So what I'm requesting, Doug, is a short-term plan, an intermediate plan, and a long-term plan. And I don't see that. I well, haven't. Well, it sounds like he's, he's working. Well, you've got a seven-year plan then. I'm, what I'm is your sure. timetable, Doug? Seven, seven years includes next year, <laughs> a few years out, and seven years out. That's what okay. a seven-year plan is. So it includes all of the things that you're alluding to, so, by definition. So what's, your, definition what's your timetable, seven, Doug? To do that? Yeah. Um, September's not an unreasonable time frame okay. to, to have a chance to review data, take it to the next level, and fine-tune them. Okay, part of that will be in the monetary aspect of each year's plans, too. Yep, that was in that spreadsheet. Pardon? That there was an estimate in that spreadsheet, but things have changed a lot over the last year, as you know, with, with uh, uh, we're getting new information on what contractors are charging, so we've got to use that and go back and recalculate. It's, it's constantly changing. The availability of contractors is a big problem. Um, we have to talk to them and find out if anybody's willing to do the work, and if so, what are they likely to charge? It's a lot I don't of work. think that should enter into the equation. The equation should be <clears throat> the planning, the funding, and then let the commissioners worry about getting the, oh. getting the contractors. I'm sure they'll have have a comment on the the basis of their estimates, whether or not it came where it came from. So, well, yes. Basically, the, when it, everything that they've said so far has been off the footage, and the footage is that CMA has and the cost that they had compared to what they have. I, Left uh, totally out of sight. We know that. There's no, there's from 68,000 to 170,000 difference. Do you? Well, the, the, the foot per. Why don't, you get, why don't we anticipate uh, preliminary information coming before September? I'd like to hear what the motion is. Read that back. Do you have it? It was for Mike. Yeah. Mike made the motion to give the water system until September to provide short, mid, and long-term planning. Move the question. Okay. I'm a yes on it. I vote no. I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Just uh, one other um, question, I guess, uh, pertaining to what Mike had mentioned and what happened actually with last year's Altdorf project where the design or the plan was not engineering stamped. So as we commit to a September time frame, possibly the Water Committee will discuss that at our next meeting, uh, is the understanding that we need to have whatever proposals we have for year one, two, three to seven engineering stamped. Is that my understanding? Because that will then involve the Board of Commissioners to authorize money to be spent on getting a design done and stamp plan engineer. So I just want to make sure I have the clarification. Is that, is that your well, interpretation? The suggestion I make is that we have some preliminary reviews well before September. Yes. So you bring about a question about your, the basis of your estimates versus potential estimates. So we will approve them on a serial basis. Okay. All right? Or deal with them on a serial basis. Thank you. That's all I have right now. Okay. All right. 
I think you all have seen this two-page analysis of this is highway, highway just schedule. It was in your package. There was several, at least two emails of the, the folder. One yeah. of them had two files in it. Yes. Were they the same files that were in both emails? No, it was the second file just had the agenda and the updated one of the cash flow. Everything else was in the first one. Right. The, the email that had just two files in the folder had the same file names as two files in with all the other ones in the larger folder. The agenda didn't make it into the large folder. So that was different. The cash flow, yeah, it was in the other one, but it was updated in the second email. And I, I wrote that in the email. Okay, you haven't seen this? That was in the first email, though. All right, I can't do it from memory. <laughs> so, yeah. But do you have a copy yeah. that you can hand to me? All right, let's do that. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay, the, the idea is to create a long-term view. And we, we are constantly focused on the next year, what the budget is and all that. So essentially, this is uh, a description of what potential projects are, could be going on, uh, essentially what our uh, cash flow issues are for uh, 2023 through 2027. And there is a whole series of assumptions that need to be addressed. Um, none of this is cast in concrete. It's all a matter of um, this is a plan and it's really a suggestion for thinking about the future. Um, the first line is the budget. And the budget is escalated by 4% a year for inflation. Adjusted for any loans that are coming off, so that you see next year's budget is less than this year's budget by the factor of the loan uh, being uh, reduced, the loan payments being reduced. You walk through this and you say, okay, uh, the suggestion is that we have 20000 go into a CRF for highway equipment and 50000 going in per year, more or less constantly up until 2026 for uh, road construction. Um, backhoe is included in this. Um, that results into, into uh, added items above the budget, which are the warrant articles. So then you look at the movement here. Then you, may, then you look at where uh, the potential issues are with respect to um, disposition of the CRF. So the suggestion is 50,000, 2023, 2024, 2025, reduced to 40, and then 20. Um, the Grisson culvert is, a, is an issue uh, in terms of the suggested value of the CRF. Idlewise Drive, uh, the CRF suggestion is that we put in 130,000 from the multiple years, 2023, 2024, and 2025. That reduces the um, issue or the loan. And the suggestion here is that Idlewise Drive is done in 2026, which means that if we estimated 300,000 for the project, we will we'll have worked it down by 130,000 as a result of the CRF. 
uh, making the payments uh, $22,000. Uh, Grissom uh, is suggested to be a 15-year pay uh, loan. The amount there would be uh, of 300,000 would be 60,000 offset, so it's 240, so that's 23,000 per year. This gets us. The Grissom is. Uh, we had a five-year uh, permit that lapsed. We applied for an additional five years. The the estimates for either both Idlewise Drive and Grissom Culvert need to be revisited um, because of the lapse of time since we have worked out these numbers. Um, there's some controversy with Grissom in terms of the dollar amount estimated. This is cut back from the original estimate because we felt it was unnecessary items that were included in it. It's a very large project. It's a substantial issue. But those are the two main projects, Idlewise Drive and Grissom, that are looking, we're looking at near term. So that's essentially it, and really the bottom line is that taxes are going to go up as a result of um, essentially uh, capital reserves and offsetting the future as far as substantial loan payments. We're reducing the future loan payments, smoothing that out as a result of the capital reserves. This is the thought process. So what you see is uh, 2023 being 805,000 or 806, rounding it to moving up to, in 2027, 893. So that is, it's a function of the fact that we now have um, the um, exposure for both Idlewise Drive and the Grissom. And Grissom needs to be explored substantially more than what it has been at this particular point in time. All the information is stale. Uh, I think we'll pro I, I recommend that we would put in a warrant article for uh, an engineering review and a budgetary estimate for Grissom. And also what if we initiate Idlewise Drive in 2006, it has an implication on uh, the water system with respect to um, work that needs to be done before we pave Idlewise Drive. So that's one element that should be noted in your, your plan, that we have that particular issue. Any comments? You arrived at $50,000 a year for road construction CRF based on a road plan? Based on Idlewise Drive and the, uh, the Grissom Culver. Only those two items. But you have an Idlewise Drive 10 year loan separate? 10 year loan comes in after, as a result of doing it, um, that would be. Um, the, uh, the loan payments required at that particular point in time. So, so you collected the fifty thousand a year. We're starting in next year. Actually, right. So we have it in twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. The the warrant article that. included that. So the fifty thousand starting in twenty twenty four plus a loan for Idlewise Drive. Is that what you're saying? We don't we don't pay out. Otherwise, drive with the capital reserves. We're doing it ahead of the capital reserves being able to fund the project. When does the otherwise drive project begin? 2006, uh, 2026. Now it can be deferred. And if 
that's a possibility. We just push it out. So the Otherwise Drive project begins in 2026, and you make a loan payment in 2026 because you're borrowing the money to do the project that year. Right. So the capital the, reserve isn't being used. The capital used reserve, for if you look at. Um, Tell me if the capital reserve is being used for Otherwise Drive at all. It, it is, you look at application of the CRF. So Idlewise Drive, we're applying $130,000 um, against the project. And the project is estimated at $300,000. It's a lot on this schedule. But essentially what we're attempting to do is to, is to give a logic for future planning and whether or not we want to do Idlewise Drive in 2006. Or we run out of gas as far as Grissom, as far as the permit from DES uh, in 2027. So we have to make a decision on what we're doing with, with Grissom. So this says in 2023 under the application of the CRF that 50,000 is going to be spent on Idlewise Drive in 2023? Yeah, that's what that's what the CR we the warrant article covered. That what are we doing? Raising fifty thousand, right? Fifty thousand is going into the CRF. Application of CRF. Is that funding CRF? Yeah. Has he got another line item about? It's the CRF, and it's the suggested disposition of the CRF to part particular projects. There's one line item saying road construction CRF, which is the total amount. Then there's a suggestion as to where to apply it. And that's really the logic. It, it could, you could apply all of it to... Spend being applied. That we will eventually spend that money when the project is initiated. It remains in the CRF. There's a line item that says otherwise ten year well otherwise ten year loan. Right. Up under added items. And you said that the project begins in twenty twenty six and payments on the loan start at fourteen thousand two fifty. And then down under application of CRF, road construction CRF has a positive fifty thousand and under that is otherwise. I'm assuming that's Idlewise Drive. It has negative 50,000 starting in 2023. I don't understand that. Of course, because it's offsetting the 50,000, we're applying 20,000 into. So it, it, the negatives foot to the dollar amount of fifty thousand. It's just arithmetic. Is anything happening to Idlewise Drive with an expenditure in twenty twenty three? No. All it says is that we're parking this money. That's all it all it indicates. It doesn't indicate in the road construction CRF. It's in the road construction CRF. I don't understand the Idlewise Drive, mm -hmm. Idlewise on the application CRF with a negative 50. Nothing's happening to Idlewise Drive, nothing's coming out it's of the CRF. It's just reconciling the 50. I could do it mechanically some, some other way, but it just was convenient for me to say, look, uh, 50,000 was coming out of the CRF, was going to be applied to Idlewise Drive wasn't the fact that it was going to be expended. It was the fact that I'm just zeroing out the 50000 That's all it is. Yes, sir. Uh, is this similar to what was done this year where we committed $10,000 of the uh, highway equipment repair to the international dump truck? Is that what, how you Similar. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's, 
No, you didn't have much time to review it, so we can come out and go again next next week if that's necessary. Okay, um, the Water System Committee transfer of knowledge. You sent uh, information on that. And just a couple of things first. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled for Monday. I've been working with the committee on uh, trying to come up with a regular meeting schedule, and we've agreed to meet monthly on the second and fourth Monday at 4 o'clock. I've sent the office, and they'll be posting the notice for these three meetings, the one next week and the ones from May already. So it'll become much like what you do with the commissioners we're scheduling a month ahead. <coughs> um, what day are you meeting? Take it. What day? Uh, Monday, the 24th, next Monday. Oh, on Mondays. And you then, said the uh, second and fourth and, right. week. I didn't get the day, though. The, the um, regular meetings are going to be the second and the fourth Monday of each month. <coughs> Um, the last thing to schedule is the office visit, and just to reiterate that, if the purpose is to educate the committee on what's available, it's not an inspection, it's not an audit, nothing. We just need to learn what's there because we're trying to improve the quality of data uh, on the system. There's hopefully 50 years of records there, and there might be some useful information uh, for what we're doing with all the records, so we need to figure out what's there. Um, we will work on a date with you that's least disruptive. That's my goal, is to not disrupt the office. And um, I think for the committee, uh, when we did the tour with Ian, Friday worked out best for the, some of the committee members who are not always here. Yeah, is like the whole committee coming? Yeah, yeah. That's it's a little excessive. Yeah, I know it's going to be tight. Can we maybe have like a few of the members come? <clears throat> And I well, think there's we'll like a 30 minute limit, I'm pretty sure. Again. There's a 30 minute limit, I believe, um, for 91 A's to come in. For an office visit? Yes. Really? Yes. Where's that? Never heard that before. I'll double check, but there's it's written somewhere. Yeah. Not in the RSA? It was like a policy that a policy. some commissioners could had put be, together. Could be a court case precedent. Is it in? Municipal Association, are they stating that? I'll find the information. Okay. And we'll discuss this Monday to see if your committee can just designate a, you know, two people or three people to come, something like that, not the whole group. Yeah. If that's... I, I mean, know. I can scan whatever over two to make your time being there less. Yeah, we're not looking to, to get records at that point. We just want to learn what's there. Then we can communicate, well, we need a copy of this, or we need a copy so we're just trying to educate, basically, mm -hmm. is the goal, to learn what's there. Um, the water operator RFP in search of, that's the mark is handling that, leading that, is that correct, Mark? Yes. Um, transfer of knowledge, I think there was a request today, and they responded to that, but that's something the committee can review and expand and refine. Uh, that's a concern, how do we get Big concern. How do we get the information uh, from Ian? It's pretty much in his head. Depending on what day you talk to him, it's one piece of information or another. It's not always reliable. So we've got to try to figure out. Uh, one suggestion is to literally drive around with him and get into. That will trigger his brain if he sees some. Oh, that's such and such, and oh, that's so and so, and have somebody writing it down. That's a possibility. I don't, I don't know what the best method mm -hmm. is, but we've got to figure out a way to, I wish we could put electrodes on his brain and just dump it <laughs> to a thumb drive. But That'd be scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. We, we'll be talking about this Monday at the meeting. That's a really high priority. Obviously. Okay. We do have some maps that were updated, <clears throat> the, the great big maps, um, in a meeting last year here with Ian and the Horizons engineers, um, and we did discover as a whole collective, we discovered things that were not updated in the system from years past. So we did make a lot of map updates from that. So that's the kind of thing you can say, oh, well, that's not there, it's here now, or there's a, a line missing there, or uh, amazing things. So that's what we've got to continue. Uh, we've just got to talk as a group and figure out how to do it. And that, was, that process will start Monday. 
That's it. Just uh, as an individual, not representing the Water Committee, uh, but what was discussed just earlier in regards to the short term and long term plan that will be discussed Monday by the Water Committee, hopefully. Um, in addition to having stamped drawings, um, my, my question would be do you also want the Water Committee to look at uh, budget estimates, uh, things of that, or should we just be focusing on the plan and then handing that in with sufficient time so that the Board of Commissioners or office can figure out those monetary, because we cannot as a committee spend money. And I well, the issue on, on the uh, cost estimates are important because somewhere along the line we're going to have to fund the projects and we have a, a decision to make as to how we fund it. Um, if we're thinking of funding it through water fees, um, that is going to be a difficult proposition. If we're thinking about going into debt, that's another another issue. Yes. Can you clarify if the water system committee is producing stamped engineering drawings? How that happens? Well, that is an issue in terms of the basis for the estimate. Uh, we need to make a determination as to the value that is brought about by engineering estimates or some other estimate. So, to get an estimate of what a project would cost, you need an engineering drawing first to ask for an estimate on it. Well, that's, that's an issue in terms of the cost to get there. And once, once we have a list of the projects, we make a determination as to whether or not we want the additional effort from the engineers to make a determination as to cost. So it's the a water matter, system a, committee isn't isn't getting engineering drawings stamped by anybody. Not at this point. No. So I, um, that was part of the conversation I'm hearing is that they're producing engineering stamped drawings so they can have estimates. I, well, I think I, I think we take it at one step at a time. I think a conceptual estimate can be done by footages. So with I with a realistic number. The footage that they use is totally not right. So the water well, system committee isn't doing any stamped engineering drawings. No, they don't have the quality. That's my question. Okay. Do you see yeah. my point? Right. The issue is we make a determination based on the information they have and based on their uh, belief and how valid the numbers are. We then make the next decision. Do you see my point? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we were on obviously not even funded as a water committee this past annual meeting to even ascertain for our stamped engineering drawing. We would have had to have the commissioners approve of a cost to get that. Right. And that was not that would not be cheap. No, it's that's the reason that's the reason why we do we right. do it in a stepwise function to make a determination to number one uh, is the uh, priority of the project. Mm -hmm and the urgency associated with it, and then the cost, you know, in terms of, um, you know, will we go with limited amount of funds that we have and the ability to raise money through financing. That's all part of the picture. Okay, correspondence. Donna, thank you for the email. Um, the auditors would like to have um, a email of uh, a meeting which confirms the fact that we don't have a financial risk associated with the value of invested funds. How do we do that? And we, we don't have any risk because it's a matter of essentially cash in the hands of the bank. The trustees do not do right. so does speculative investments. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time looking at 30, our, uh, Gatsby 31 to see why we're even doing a policy on this. Originally you had the RSA pluck, plopped in last week. Right. And then it's, I was look, reading our uh, Gatsby 31 and saying we don't have any 
investments I know, I, and stocks I know and the issue external the, funds we're we're participating in. It's like it's 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 a uh, I think it applies to large institutions. Absolutely. It doesn't it apply seems. to us. But thirty one, all they're looking for is a um, statement from us saying that we don't have a financial risk associated with cash that's in the uh, in the accounts. Can we make a motion and state that? Is that good enough for that? That's the policy is we don't do it. We don't have external investments. Instead of a table where we're doing percentages of exposure at the bottom of the, what we have as a draft. Right. Uh, that's already a policy that's in place. I saw that. I think that you signed it, didn't you? It was dated 2011. Yeah, I think your name might be on it. I think you, you. I think you drafted that back then. Yeah. Well, it's what you call investments. If money is in a bank account, you could contrive it to be an investment. So. Simple as that. We, it doesn't apply to us. However, they're looking for us to make a statement. And they're looking for an email of the minutes of a meeting that covers this particular issue. So all I'm trying to do is comply with their wishes. Even though I think it's extraordinary and it doesn't, doesn't represent anything, but all we're saying is we have no financial risk which I believe is the case. <clears throat> okay. So when does that happen? You need a special meeting or No, a motion they're, they're, they're just looking for, they'll get a copy of the minutes of this meeting, today. which will in today's meeting, which will say that we have no financial risk in any of our accounts. Simple as that. We don't need a motion. Just the minutes to okay. say we said it. I'll make a motion that the minutes be forwarded to the auditors addressing the uh, financial risk. So this won't apply until next year. Pardon me? This won't be in effect until next year. The 2022's year is well, closed now. Fine. That's I'll yeah. second that though. I guess let's get the paperwork done so that there's no it's it's that yeah. simple. All we need to do is give them a, so I made a motion, you second it, yes. 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 So there's no adverse. The uh, Dan emails. Um yep. John Kinsellarich and Larry Leonard uh, sent in about the boards not being in at the dam. Okay. So, any import to that? For the new ordinance, the boards should all be in. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, any public appearance? So, should we leave that without? Should there be a motion to put the boards in according to the new ordinance? Uh, you guys are the commissioners. Okay. We make a motion that we have the DPW put the boards in according to the new ordinance. I'll second that. And yes. 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 Okay. Public comments? Any public comments? Jay? Okay. Sorry, I'll let Doug go first. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, just a quick one on, uh, do it? on the rafts. Uh, more. Um, per the ordinance that was uh, the uh, petition warrant article that was passed at the annual meeting, I'd like uh, permission to uh, spend up to $100 to get a sample of all the materials for the plan that was presented, including a mooring block, um, a one foot piece of chain just as a sample to try everything out, and the fitting to make sure everything's going to fit together and work. And if it works, then we can come back with a request for the whole. The whole purchase, but I uh, haven't seen the mooring block yet, and we need to make sure that the clip that is designed to go on that will fit on the mooring block. So, best bet is to uh, I don't think they have any in stock, I think we have to order one, 
$66 for that. So the total, and these parts would all be usable in the actual project if the, everything works. I expect it will. Might have to modify uh, the attachment to the boring block, but everything else seems to be okay so far. Um, and if that works, I'm not sure what the lead time is. I've got to talk to build a block, find out what the lead time is on getting the blocks. So it's April already. I'm just concerned that we stay ahead of it. And we have uh, uh, some folks uh, that will work on installing this, including a retired Navy diver. So uh, we've got a team in place, but we need to get the sample of the materials in place to make sure it's going to work. So it would be no more than $100 at this point, which would be materials that are okay. sample now, but can be used in the actual project when it's implemented. Okay, I'll make a motion for $100 to be expended for parts or whatever to the rail coming out of the CRF. Before I second it, it's, it's not from the CRF. It's not from the Warner. Warner. Is there a presumption that it's already decided that certain, number, certain people are doing a project? Nope. So we've got the horse in front of the car here a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh, undescribed volunteers. Uh, Doug, maybe you can list who the people are involved. Uh, uh, Wood Mc Mc McNiven is a retired Navy diver, and he's offered to help. I'm willing to help as well. I think we can, uh, the moorings, once they're installed, are permanent. So there'll be no more fall and spring project to take them out and put them back in. They're permanent. Um, the chains will stay on them. There'll be a semi-submersible mooring buoy that will float below the ice during the winter uh, when the rafts are removed. That makes it easy to reattach them in the spring. Very easy. The DPW can just pop the raft in, float them out, pull the chains up, reattach them. So it should be very easy to do. Uh, we're going to, if, uh, if this plan generally is okay, then uh, we'll actually put out a call for more uh, volunteers, see if we can find some more people to help. There's probably some scuba divers in the group somewhere, <laughs> I would guess. So if the plan generally sounds okay, we've got a core ready to go with Wuda and myself. Um, okay, so right now it's Wuda and you. Right, with, with more to be recruited. Okay. The big concern right now is to test the, the, all the parts, make sure that all the parts we spec'd out fit together perfectly. It's one thing to look at them and see them in the store and so forth, but to actually have them and clip them all together and make sure it's all going to work is another step. So this is the next step in the plan. So we need a motion to form a group, construction group. Okay. Well, I have a motion on, on the floor at this point to expend the $100. Which I don't know whether it was second or not. Can we put that table out for a second? Bring that back up after we get the group. Okay. All right. So the group is starts with two. Two, and then open for other. And volunteers. they can enlist volunteers. Right. So I make a motion that we approve a raft construction group and have Woody McNiven and Doug Prescott head it and they can enlist more volunteers as they see fit. I'll second that. Yes. Yes. One, one point of discussion. I would add to that that uh, procedurally we will have uh, everybody that's involved execute the uh, volunteer liability yeah, waiver just gonna say uh, document. I've already done that. I'll make sure what it does and any other volunteers will have to do that. That's just the correct thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to make a motion that nobody on that committee can act until they sign the waiver. Yep, that's fine. I'm making that as a motion. All right. I confused it a little bit. Huh? We should vote on one and then add yeah. to it. Yeah, let's yeah. We'll vote on the the, uh, the formation of the committee, so I vote yes. 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 Okay, and then? Then a motion to have everyone sign the volunteer waiver before they join the committee, join the construction group. Second and yes. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Do you, now, the, now the hundred dollars. Yes. <laughs> Give her a chance here. I need a second. Did I get a second? second when she's ready. Yes. Yes. Fire motions. Okay. <laughs> yes. Do you, I've got a question on this. Do you have a conceptual design that's drawn up? Yes. I do. Uh, it was presented at the annual meeting. That's what you're using? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a motion that we send that conceptual design, if that's what you're using, that's why I asked that question, to our insurance company for their approval. That's it. The They're the ones that are showing it. Is the hundred dollar motion still open on the floor? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you voted on that one. You thought what? You voted on that one. I thought so too. Yeah. What? For the hundred dollars, you all voted yes. We voted yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm making another motion to have the conceptual design sent to our insurance company for their approval before we go spend X amount of dollars and they say, I'm oh, sorry, we're not going to show it. No second? No second. Okay. I think it's crazy that we're going to have people basically amateurs. And I don't say that derogatory, but with no background to design something. And if the village just is going to assume your liability, then, they, then that's what's going to happen. So I think it's best that we have an insurance company so at least we know we're covered for it. I'll second it. I, I thought I said second it, but I'll second it and vote yes. How many yes on that? And Mark is obviously not here for that vote. Okay. Do you want to wait for him to come back? All right. that that uh, culvert and bridges study is tonight six o'clock of the zoom presentation by Saco River stream crossings assessment project uh, it's assessment of culverts and bridges for uh, uh, quality of they, they need right. work and so forth um, and I believe there are some in Idlewise you you knew that Jay that is correct there are some That's in the study that are in Idlewise so I don't know who is I'm gonna Try to attend. Okay, I've good. already signed up for it, but oh. I don't know if anybody else right. wants they, to they voted on the sending it to the insurance company to. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the insurance company has design engineers that evaluate stuff like that. They basically insured the rafts the way we had them, so I don't know. Okay. okay. All right. I'll make a motion. Uh, Jay, just uh, one uh, quick question in regards to the notification that went out. Uh, concerning the, the uranium in the water from one of our wells. Um, I, I didn't get one in my water bill. I'm just wondering how, the, did some people get them and some people not? No, every single person should have gotten one. In the water bill? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I know I, I didn't get one, just the bill itself. Okay. I mean, I knew about it. I was here. It's posted on the bulletin boards, and it yeah. also was sent out, but it should have okay. been attached, so apologize that it was missed. Is this after we go? Uh, these, this, these are the policies, and I forwarded them on to the auditors to just see what their comments were on. So that's the status of those. Okay. Um, Make a motion that. Uh, Can I just? I don't know. I think I need to do this. We're going to go into non-public session to discuss water operator. And I asked Jay to confirm something he told me, probably over a year ago. And because we're going into public session, they can't hear it from you. But I want them to hear it from you. The question I asked you when I came in. Yeah. 
So it was about, it was in the middle of the project when you actually told me this. Is Jay had told me that Ian Hayes had told him he was going to resign from being the water operator when the Rhinac project was completed. Yeah, that was probably maybe a couple of years ago, some indication to that. So I thought that was noteworthy. That, And I asked him if he had told you that, you too. So I think you needed to know that and hear that from him, rather than me say hearsay from Jay over a year ago. Yeah, just not aware of that. Because that may be part of our discussion. I just needed to get that done before you left. Okay. All right. Make a motion that we go into non-public. Second. Under RSA 91A3L. Is it legal or is this it's reputation? Reputation no. or is it? Reputation is what? Uh, I don't know what the context of the yeah, non-public is, so I'm not we're sure. We're talking about water, water operator companies. So the, well, that's hiring. That's hiring. Any, well, that's as a public employee, it's, though. It comes under B. going to be a public employee. I think it's reputation. What's your reputation? I don't know what. Taking the paragraph. reputation of the companies we're going to talk about. Well, well, what paragraph is it? Is it A? I, I genuinely don't see it falling into a category, so I'm not. You're talking about rep hiring non elected officials. That's what it is, and that would be B. No? Okay. Well, Whatever. we'll affix the right yeah. designation. Um, so uh, we enter, uh, need a roll call? Yes? Yes. Yes. yes.